All right, hello, wine drinking people. Time for more of what I've had to drink yesterday. And our friends from Felipe Routini Winery just changed distributors or with our uh, the folks at Graziano now, a small guy that specializes just in wines from Argentina. I have to say, you know, I probably didn't give these wines their fair due when I reviewed them with the, the gentleman that was here from Felipe Routini Winery. And uh, this is a winery I, and I've known about for a long time. We sold their wines in the store. And the prices seem to creep up on these Argentina wines. You know, they are going through a period of inflation that uh, is causing them to give their vineyard uh, uh, winemakers and people that work at the winery like raises, 20 to 25% raises a year just to keep up with this. That's what the people from Argentina that have been in the see us have said. You know, we're going to see it in the wines. We're going to see these wines go up in price. We have to with this kind of inflation. But uh, take advantage of the great values from Argentina now. And uh, these wines better on the second day. I'd have to say, other than the Encentro, which is their new entry-level wine. This is a new label. And uh, this is owned by the Catena Group, uh, also with well, their partners in this anyways. And uh, all the state grown take 700 acres of vineyards here all over Mendoza. A lot of it in Tupangato, one of the best areas in Mendoza. Mendoza is a really large province, so a lot of people don't realize how large Mendoza is. It's not like Napa Valley, which is you know, relatively small uh, compared to, you know, Mendoza, which, uh, you know, it's could, could fit like five Napa Valleys in, in Mendoza. Anyways, uh, this one's got a good amount of ripe black uh, raspberry fruit on the nose, some pretty floral highlights in this wine. Very fresh and forward style with uh, pretty floral notes, uh, short and pleasant finish, and they make a good amount of this wine. It's a workhorse, 15,000 plus cases of things in this in control line. Anyways, the uh, Routini Cabernet Sauvignon was up next. And this wine really picked up some weight on the second day. 100% varietal. Uh, some of the better grapes, the older vines, goes into this line. A bit more oak and uh, a little bit more French oak. There's a little bit of American in the mix here as well. Good amount of fresh earth in this wine. Dark spice, currants, cassis, dark cocoa. This spice note really picking up on the second day. Kind of cigar box. A smooth and easy drinking Cabernet. But like I said, this wine gained a little bit of weight on the second day. I gave it an extra plus uh, when I came in this morning to try it out. Those fine herbs and cedar spice. Uh, some dry tannins coming in at the end, but still really well balanced. And a lot of everything are a very good bottle of Cabernet Sauvignon with twenty nine twenty five at the price. The winemaker Mariano Di Apollo, one considered one of the top guys in Mendoza today. This wine's uh, the Malbec from Routini Seas, about 50% new French oak, 20% new America. You get a little bit of that spice in the nose here. And this wine really improved on the second day. I have to say, excellent. I moved it up a whole score here. Ra black raspberry fruit, some sweet balsamic and violet-like floral notes, dark cocoa, sweet tobacco spice, really nice complexity showing after this wine had a day to open. Wow, really surprising. Bright red and blackberry fruit on the tongue with smooth tannins, but you know, it's wine's got some substance here. You could definitely age this 2011. Very fresh wine for a little while. Some lovely, pretty floral notes showing through on the finish. Excellent juice. And then the Arpartado, the wine that's, uh, well, that's named it because it's set apart from all the other wines. This wine used to be a blend. Now it's 100% Malbec, but a blend of different vineyard sources. Uh, it comes from Altamira La Consulta and Tupangato. This is the second release of this wine, this style anyways. Uh, they've been making this wine for over a decade you know, when it was a blend. And uh, it's a good amount of dark spices here to the nose. Espresso, dark mocha, dark cherry liqueur-like fruit, really sweet and ripe, brown sugar, bittersweet chocolate. Around 1,500 cases of this wine produced. Really big and chewy on the second day. This wine also gained some volume. I bumped this one up a, a notch, too, because... Wow, I don't know whether, you know, it just needed some extra time in the glass or my palate was off yesterday because eh, it could happen. Anyways, uh, really most excellent juice, really just singing on the second day and uh, seemed to gain complexity, weight, and everything. Well, that's what I had to drink with the folks from Filippo Rutini Winery, which is just called Rutini Winery now. I'm your host, Andrew Lampassoni, signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.